it's been a long time, but Android 17 is finally back, baby. You can just tell watching this episode. You can just tell by looking at it that the animators had so much fun and really enjoyed making this episode and making Android 17 scenes, all of them, just look absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the sunset, just everything about all the action pieces and everything that had to do with Android 17 this episode, they went in because it, it just was like, Yo, <laughs> they even made a trailer, if I'm not mistaken, just kind of reminding people about Android 17, probably, I think, yesterday. So, they, they really wanted to push forth, like, yo, Android 17, I don't know if he was that big of a popular character back in the day, in the DBZ days or something, but they really went to town on this episode. Now, I found it kind of a little odd, I want to say. It wasn't the most oddest thing in the world, but I did find it a bit strange that in the beginning of the episode, when then they was, you know, doing his little thing to find 17 for Goku or whatever, he decided to bring up Oob, which it was pretty much implying 100% that it's Oob, there's nobody else, when he was talking about, oh, that strong kid, and then Goku saying, oh, yeah, um, I'm gonna see him again someday, and then they was like, hey, you should train him, and he's like, me, no, I was thinking to myself, like, so, in light of everything that has transpired in Dragon Ball Super that makes the ending of Z just so... Uh, almost feeling as though it's not in continuity, they're still gonna push that forth, and, and that's still gonna be, you know, the ending of Super, potentially, or somewhere within Super, or the end point, I don't know exactly how they're gonna do it, but it seems as though they're continuing par for the course with Ooh being a staple in the series, because they brought it up, and we got the little flashback of Goku killing Kid Buu, I was like, Okay, so they want to seemingly keep him in, in the canon. I mean, it was fine anyway, but it still makes me wonder how much are they going to change about the ending of Z. Maybe they might redo the ending of Z in Super and kind of change things up to a more modern, I guess, or just an updated version of the ending of Z because I, w I would love that, especially if they change some things and just not have it the way it ended at the end of Z. I, I'd really appreciate that, but it still nonetheless felt a little bit weird of them bringing that up. I don't know if that was just to throw that in there, or just foreshadowing, just for the sake of it, even though majority, 99.9% .9 of the people that are watching this have seen the entirety, or at the very least, the ending of Z, and know what the fuck is supposed to come, but I'm kind of like... Or, or maybe they might introduce him early on, maybe we might get a glimpse of him, and that's why they're bringing him up, maybe they might throw him in some of these filler type of episodes just to expand for time or something, like, I don't know exactly what they're planning, but it did, again, feel nonetheless odd, now when we see Goku show up with Android 17, you could definitely see, I personally feel as though anyway, Android 17 was impacted, I feel, immensely, from Android 16's way of life and preserving nature and preserving animals and the life of any creature that lives. Because, you know, he wasn't like that. He didn't give a fuck about anything back in the day, you know? He was just like, whatever, I just want to have a good time. And then, if you look at the Android 17 from Trunks' timeline, let's not even go there. But, you remember, everything that... If you watch this episode, you see that Android 17 essentially embodies is that of the ideals of Android 16. Android 16, he loved the wildlife, he loved nature, and all of that good stuff. And I think Android 17, to a certain degree, even though he was an asshole towards 16, Android 17 kind of understood and appreciated him because it's like, he didn't have any ulterior motives. He was programmed to just absolutely only want to kill Goku, but instead chose a different path, even though that was part of his programming. So maybe a lot of those core elements really stood strong within 17 and made 17 feel the way he is now and completely changed his life. He did get into it a little bit and he was telling Goku, like, you know, the Dragon Balls really changed my life and just, you know, I got a family now, which I was a little bit disappointed. I ain't gonna lie that they didn't show his family. It was like, totally like, no, we're not showing that shit, all right? You're not going to be able to see it. I would have loved to see a little cool miniature 17 there. I was like, damn, we, we didn't get to see them. But, of course, within the episode, which, again, the art and animation, I need to stress. Even the backgrounds, the scenery of the wild. It was just like, Toei really wanted to make this a standout episode. They actually genuinely cared very heavily about the introduction or reintroduction of 17 to the Dragon Ball Super Dragon Ball story in general. Because it was just breathtakingly gorgeous. I really thought it was 
Mwah, top of the line there but you see the poachers coming through and we get a little more of an understanding of android 17's lifestyle he's not you know the same wild boy that he was at the beginning of the series or depending on we because we don't really know what his past life was prior to Chiro's experiments or whatever but like you can definitely see he's very different now and of course he's fighting the poachers and they're coming at him and shit like that which isn't really much to be honest with you against 17 i mean even back in the day which Seemingly, we got some very big confirmation of 17's power. I was like, yo, what, what, what's going on here? But even back in the day, he, he was kicking Super Saiyan ass. So, a couple of regular poachers, like, what, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> what the fuck you think you're doing? You, do you realize who you're up against right here? Do you realize what he was in another timeline? Are you out of your fucking mind, bro? But whatever. You know, it is what it is. The stupid poachers and 17 and Goku both kick their asses. But then Goku, which, yet again, Goku, you battle-hungry animal. It's like... Oh, yeah, um, by the way, we never got to fight. Super Saiyan, motherfucker, let's go, bitch. I'm like, Goku, what, what, what the fuck you think you're doing here, boy? What, 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 what the fuck you think you're doing right now? You out of your mind? Like, <laughs> just attacking him. Like, what if 17 would have taken that as a misunderstanding and be like, oh, you, you want to kill me right now, bro? I'm going back to my old ways. I'm killing everybody. Fuck you. I was like, Goku, you need to chill a little bit. You, you can't just attack people and say, oh, yeah, I just wanted to test you for the tournament of power. Like, the fuck you think you're doing but he went super saiyan of course and it seems as though for a good majority of his episodes and it didn't necessarily bother me but i could start to see it being a repetitive thing where goku like you know starts to fight one of these people and says hey i want to challenge you go super saiyan at first gets a little bit overwhelmed or tricked or something and then okay i gotta go super saiyan blue it's like a, a standard practice every episode of dragon ball super has to have the super saiyan blue transformation it's like in the baseball episode they had to go super saiyan blue in the baby episode where we had bra being born we had to see vegeta going super saiyan blue it's like it, there's a staple or something where toei demands at least once per episode we want super saiyajin god blue Voodoo. like what, 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 what's up with that but it, it brought forth something great and i think that this is gonna go down as one of like those things where people are making a and b's out of it and so much shit the fight between android 17 and goku in this episode so nasty i was like what the fuck and, you know, because we know even in a Super Saiyan transformation, which again, the power scaling has just been all over the place with Dragon Ball Super, especially in these intermediate episodes between the Tournament of Power. But Goku's Super Saiyan transformation has gotten to a point where he's pretty much as strong as he was going Super Saiyan 3 in his normal Super Saiyan transformation. So, you know, Goku's even a lot stronger than he was back in the day. And even that was getting, you know, overwhelmed by Android 17, and then he went blue, and Android 17 was keeping up with him, I was like, okay, in, in the fight against Krillin, at the very least, Krillin was like, yo, he was shaking, and he, he got overwhelmed after a couple seconds, and even 18 had to jump in and save him, or whatever, Android 17 was going blow for blow with a Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, a Super Saiyan Blue, I'm like, what, what what have you been doing to train, bro? Like, what the fuck is going on here? Is it just the inconsistencies of Dragon Ball Super's power scaling? Or could we very well have some sort of crazy transformation or, or dormant power lying within 17 that just either was never explored or something entirely new? Because, you know, quite a few years have passed since 17 was, you know, prominent in the story. So you gotta learn a few things, you know, a thing or two here or there. And also, by the way, really nice callback to when 17 said, I don't really know what... I can recognize you but i do recognize your voice to the end of z where he said oh man i haven't heard that voice in a while great callback but again that fight i was just like <sighs> if you like some battle if you like some action and some really cool sparring at that then this episode delivered times 10 because i can't stress how fucking awesome that was that's amv material to the max delighting too when they were going out it's just like Oh, but then of course it snaps back into the characterization of 17 that he really truly cares about wildlife. He's like, yo, pa, we, we do these things like this at this level. We're going to hurt these dolphins, bro. Like, yo, we got to relax. Yeah, at that motherfucker. So it really characterized just how much 17 cares for wildlife. I mean, he's there. His mission is to essentially 
protect that ox or whatever the fuck it is that extinct or nearly extinct creature so he really does care for them but now when we get to the whole discussion of the tournament of power goku of course has to which at this point i feel as though why the fuck you hiding it from your friends and family hide it from the general public because obviously they just don't understand they don't understand what's one plus one let alone you know just the circumstance of this situation but when you're approaching people and saying hey i need you to be a part of this thing you're gonna hide the information that, yeah, this is a fight for all of our lives right here. So I, I'm starting to question, like, stop hiding that information from the people that you really want to, you know, join up with you. And then, of course, when he slipped up, he started off with the money thing. And then he's like, hey, but we're all gonna be wiped out. And 17's like, wiped out? Tell me, uh, tell me a little bit more, Mr. Kakarato. Like, what, what the fuck you on about there? So, really nice stuff. And at the end of the day, I'm kind of curious what it's going to take to get Android 17 to turn around. Because even then, he's like, oh, well, shit happens. Fuck it. Well, we die, we die. That's just how it goes. So, I'm curious what it's going to be in order to make 17 say, okay, fuck it. I'll play your little game. I I'll join the Tournament of Power. Either way, very nicely done episode. Cool little foreshadowing for, I'm assuming, next week's episode with those aliens showing up. Could have something to do with the Gods of Destruction's planning that we seen last week's episode or the Kaioshin. I don't know, but either way, this episode... Uh, it's in the high eights. I, I, I want to say the nine, but maybe that's the fanboy. I mean, okay, fanboy score, nine. Solid. Solid nine. Maybe going critical the eight-ish, eight and a half, somewhere around there. But fanboy score nine. 17. Yo, 17. Like, damn, we in 2017. 17, 2017. Hey, there you go. But kind of curious what you guys thought about this episode. What do you think about 17 still kind of even with a Super Saiyan Blue Goku? Like, does that indicate that he's really gotten ridiculously strong? Could it be just inconsistencies in the power scaling of Dragon Ball Super yet again at it, considering the fact that, you know, Kr Krillin was putting up a good fight against Gohan and Goku, you know what I'm saying? And what do you think in general about the episode as a whole? What do you think about the foreshadowing of Oob? Was that necessary? Is there some plans maybe you think that they have to introduce Oob earlier than expected? And your overall thoughts of the episode again, like, fantastic episode, and if you've been craving for some Android 17 for years upon years... This is that episode, boy. But that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and stalk my Facebook to get more when the video ends. I'm Fennel World, and as always, people, have an awesome day.